Did you sleep last night? Yeah. How long? Four hours. Four hours of sleep, this kid right here. Beast. You guys gotta learn. Recognize right here. Woo! These glutes. Alright, guys, let's go. Time's on. Coming back to you with a, another rolling commentary. This one's gonna be no gi. So my first partner is gonna be Squids here. I'm gonna tag my uh, my training partner's Instagram and their belt rank in the video. So if you guys wanna um, go look up who's who and kind of get a feel for the athlete. Uh, starting off with a nice inside heel hook on Squids right here. He left his knee just kind of behind on that first initial pass and I was able to capitalize. Uh, Squid's really good at um, headquarters, and I would say he probably prefers to play top. So, and honestly, on this training session, I was trying to play more bottom anyways. So it kind of worked out to my favor. Uh, here I go for uh, omoplata, and then straight to almost like a crab, uh, crab ride, bear and bolo type of deal. Um, and I, I'm left with a body lock. I'm trying to climb Squid's. Uh, back, but he does a, a decent job of not letting me get to the back and also try not to waste too much energy This is maybe like the second round and then uh, Another inside hill hook right there like 50 50 type of um, Hill hook there. I've been hitting that a lot from uh, a felled leg drag when the opponent opens their knees up and their hill gets vulnerable Instead of like fixing my legs first. I've been diving back on the hill. It's actually my training partner um, Tristan kind of opened my eyes to that <clears throat> and it's really made a huge a huge impact on my ability to finish the hooks that, that's something that i personally find that i struggle with is not getting into the legs but like finishing a hook because everybody's so good at escaping hooks anymore all right so now we're just uh playing a little bit of top you can see squid's doing a good fight a good job hand fighting staying in the pocket something that we preach here a lot bristol jiu-jitsu so kind of getting a little bit of taste of my own medicine right here um, kiss of the dragon to the back just kind of take his energy elsewhere instead of on top of me and I dive pretty eagerly for that Kimura I, I know I'm risking my back but I, I feel really comfortable defending from the back I feel like it's I'm, I'm pretty decent at not letting guys get my back even though you can see like squids is very very close to getting my back my hips are just a little high and that's something that i always try to do in this position is keep my hips above his hips if he can climb his hips over my hip line then obviously he's going to be able to get his hooks and, and be able to control but i always like kind of see how my my hips like i'm bumping him in the face with my butt and it's going to be it's really hard and it makes it makes my training partner use a lot of energy to try to keep up and he does a good job. I, I try to commit with that Kimura a little bit too much. And he does a really good job of just tracking me and, and kind of keeping me on my heels. But I'm eventually able to able to escape and hit this, like, honestly, a really bad wrestle up from my butt. I, I wasn't really even taking it that serious. But um, I went with it, risking my, my neck. Um, and now I'm just back on top. But uh, this training session, I'm not really playing too much top. I don't think uh, in the rounds you're going to be seeing me play too much top. My my mindset is kind of just like open up, have fun, not use too much energy, and um, like see if I can catch mistakes. You know, that's my main my main theme in, in this training session. This might be the only round that I'm actually playing top. I'm usually a top player, but. Uh, just today it wasn't gonna it wasn't really my theme I, my, my right knee is kind of busted up so I, wanted, I chose to play a little bit more guard so I'm just kind of like waiting for squids to make a move here um, maybe I thought about the arm bar it wasn't gonna be there the back uh, it could have been there I didn't want to force it but the elbow was out so I chose to go crucifix and then this is always like one of my uh, favorite attacks when I get the crucifix is just try to finish the choke nothing too fancy about it It's always gonna be there the neck will always be like there maybe a little bit vulnerable Especially when you have both arms trapped and then just attack, you know don't have to have a great position But a crucifix is a good position When I was a, a blue belt uh, my training partner was like hey don't worry about the hook so much Get the neck and squeeze it and that always just like kind of resonated with me um, here arm drag to um, take down and then a nice little long step to finish out the round okay so now i'm going with uh our newest addition here at bristol jiu-jitsu paulo magaleas paulo filo magaleas 
Uh, by the way, if you guys are interested in following his YouTube channel, um, it's called the Jiu Jitsu Box, and he's got somewhere upwards of like 60,000 uh, subscribers. It's, it's just like, uh, there's a lot of Jiu Jitsu stuff on his page. <clears throat> so if you guys want to go give him a, a follow, I think he's not really been putting too much content out lately, but he's going to start again. Honestly, Paulo <clears throat> is one of the most knowledgeable guys or athletes, I should say, that I've ever met in Jiu Jitsu. Besides, uh, like, you, know, you know, a select few, obviously my coach, Selma Braga, is is amazing and one of the best jiu-jitsu athletes i think to ever walk the face of the planet but paulo has such a contrasting style from from a lot of the sport players that i've ever learned from he's very slow he's very methodical he's very precise he wastes literally zero energy on anything he does and i mean i think it's like the pure essence of jiu-jitsu as you can see like the guy paulo is not like super strong he's not he's i'm actually bigger than he is like i'm probably like 20 pounds bigger but every single movement that he makes matters right he, i mean his, his hands are huge his feet are huge and he's just so firmly planted on the mat and every single move he does it just he just like wastes zero energy and that's something that i've i'm actually like kind of wrapping my head around um as i'm getting older i want to move a little bit smoother i don't i want to make my movements count i don't want to rely on like flexibility and and uh, cardio as much i want to be able to have like good smooth jiu-jitsu just kind of like paulo so um i think it's it's unique um and it's definitely a contrasting style than what i what i typically have so um yeah so paulo is like really really just like solid anyways uh so my mindset when i'm rolling with paulo obviously they're still early in the training session but I don't want to have to rely on pace. I don't have to rely on on youth to like beat Paulo. I want to rely on on technique and, and setting my jujitsu up for the next move. Um, and I'm just trying to feel right. Like me and Paulo have been training. We've been tra we've trained with each other quite a bit, but it's not like we've had years on the mats together. We've literally just had like two or three months. And although we kind of like know what each what each other's best games are, like there's still some things that we're still trying to figure out i know he's very crafty and i know he loves to set traps his, of, of it, like probably his iq is tenfold of mine but um i just like uh rely, have to rely on my jujitsu and as you guys can see i'm i'm leaving a little bit of holes i'm not being like super offensive just because I'm, I'm simply just trying to have fun and, and to fill it out and and obviously the the camera's on me today and i didn't want to be like too crazy and offensive to where it could just be like a stalemate if or just like knee slicing to my left side the whole time and making it boring for the camera so i'm kind of opening up and and getting a feel for you know i want i want the camera i want the audience to see my my play defense so we can talk about it and i want the camera to see offense so we can talk about it as well all right, so that's Paulo's best position. I would probably say his best position is a crucifix. He's very crafty from there. He's shown me a lot of a lot of killer finishes from the crucifix that I've never seen before, and it really helped my game. He's trying to set up a guillotine or maybe a dash attempt, um, and I just had fight the hands, and then I try to attack with like almost like a Rotulo style. Um, Darts or anaconda attempt right there, but it was just nowhere close. And as we're nearing the end of this round, um, I actually get on bottom, and this is also Paulo's one of best Paul, one of Paulo's best positions is butterfly guard, and he's got me near sweep. Here I try to cartwheel over his butterfly hook. That's something I see my professor Samuel Braga do. He's ten times the athlete I am, so he's able to pull away. But I'm always trying to like uh, duplicate it, to duplicate that move, and uh, maybe hit it once or twice in my training career it's just it's a kind of a dynamic movement for me but that sums up the role with paulo which by the way is second degree, degree black belt now um we're getting the kyle and something happened with the camera where it only caught started halfway through but here you guys can see i go immediately for the hill first and then i worry about my legs second that's the exact same hill that i think i hit was on squids um and it, if you guys aren't doing that, like I highly recommend like doing that, like just go for the hill first. You see Kyle's kind of moving a lot on top. He goes for almost a leg drag and then he fixes his position to a leg drag, which is really good. And it leaves me defending, having to frame away and a little bit of high pummeling. And I think Kyle right here, his mind is over underpass, maybe you're sticking to a, a leg drag, like a tripod and doing honestly a pretty decent job. I'm not really able to do much offense, just kind of like frame a little bit 
leads himself right to a triangle. I kind of let, let him out of that. And here's one of my favorite moves to do is I go for the waiter, or no, excuse me, not the waiter sweep, the um, uh, muscle sweep. And then I un end up underhooking the far leg and it trips him up and that arm, his right arm will nine times out of 10 be vulnerable for the straight arm like from bottom. That's a really solid sweep when the guy goes to stand up from close guard. Anymore, if the guy stand up from close guard, you should always have an option when they stand up like you should need you should have a sweep that is going to work you don't want just want to let them stand up and be like uh right so if you're not going to an immediate sweep attempt or transition into a different guard like daily evo or some type of open guard you're just going to be a daily and a dollar short uh so now i go with uh, almost like an s mount what i'm thinking is is uh monoplot or spiral arm lock i actually learned this at marcelo garcia's gym years ago uh I went, I went up to new york city to train a couple classes there and they went over the monoplot and that's something i or the spiral arm lock that's something i never forgot like when i was probably a pro belt i i took that information and i just never forgot it and it's always suited me really well that's one of my favorite submissions from top is that uh spiral arm lock so Kyle's going to body lock and I'm going to slap on Williams guard right here. This is a really good um, way to do um, plot is if you're not super flexible or you have a bad knee or bad knees. And I'm trying to trap his leg from rolling. And he's not able to roll, but he's able to get his arm out. So that leaves me with having to lose the um, plot up. It goes to a seatbelt and work it back escape recovery. Um, so you guys, I want to give a shout out to my cousin who was in town and he's not a cameraman in the least bit. I just slapped the camera in his hands like, hey, push record and follow me. So if it's a little shaky, just work with us. Um, he still did an amazing job of following me around. So anyways, I'm able to take this is what I mean right here. I know it's coming up. <laughs> I'm able to take Kyle's back and go to the body lock. But uh, something about Kyle is like he's very pesky to finish. Like he will fight tooth to nail to knock it finished but it's good though because it's actually really um laborious even if you are levels above a guy but he's hard to finish it's it's very taxing to try to finish uh your opponent so you can see I, I even had my left arm deep and he had a grimacing look on his face and maybe he thought about tapping but he didn't and i think that's that's like a lot of people as a black belt they respect the submission a little bit too much and they don't really fight it like they would somebody who's a pro belt like the, the, the what i call it big brother syndrome and that's one of my biggest pet peeves like just because i have a different color belt or just because i've been doing it longer doesn't mean when i slap on a, a rear naked choke it's going to be that much better or it's going to be that much tap worthy than somebody your own level so if you're listening to this video and you notice that maybe you're kind of giving your instructor some stuff you're actually not doing yourself justice and you're not benefiting your instructor or me at all by giving me easy stuff that i couldn't catch on somebody at my own level because i guarantee if i roll with another black belt who's my age and my weight they're not going to give me anything easy and i don't want to have false confidence that i'm going to have anything easy whenever i train Okay, so we're moving on to Tristan at Tristan Storm Pack. He loves attention, so go ahead and follow him on Instagram if you guys want. Um, it's Tristan has got phenomenal footwork from the top. He's very young and hungry pearl belt. Um, he actually just came to Bristol uh, almost a year ago, I'd say. And, and um, we, as, a, as a community, we've just really fallen in love with, with the guy. He's always positive, always um, happy a smile on his face and he's one of the biggest jiu-jitsu geeks i've ever met in my whole entire life sometimes i have to tell tristan to shut up and don't talk about jiu-jitsu anymore but here i go for the um, knee bar trap like made famous by gabriel argis and herbo santos where you trap their leg that so i could go for the knee bar here but the problem is that this is still a free leg so i decide to choose my battle and trap the leg and then finish the knee bar so it's really hard to turn out of it if you guys want to watch that done in like real time gabriel argis or herbo santos here i do a dummy sweep to the cameraman because he said something smart so he's a little bit off balance um tristan does like a really good job of when we lock hands like that he always like spins his arms and it gets me my, you guys saw my whole body like rotated with that energy um 
that's worth noting that he does things like this and he lit his big inspiration with his passing is jt and mine as well jt torres like big inspiration honestly for my whole jiu-jitsu is jt torres but um right now i'm playing a little bit more of a lax style today so a deep daily or excuse me underhook daily heva and tristan's not really a guy that i want to choose to play leg locks with so I kind of just like catch and release. I'm usually using leg locks, to be honest, from bottom. I use leg lock entries to sweep my opponent and get on top and pass guard. But like I said today, I'm not really even focused on playing top. And here Tristan does a good job of passing, but I just kind of frame away and sit up. If I block the far shoulder and keep my elbow in, it's really hard for the guy to finish, no matter how big and strong. There's a false reap attempt into a 50-50 heel hook. He does a good job of turning. I'm not really able to stick with it. But instead, I see a an attempt to maybe come up to a leg drag, but I have to keep my legs inside, so I'm almost playing like a, no, it's just like a leg drag with my my legs xed, um, body lock possibly. But I know in my mind, I'm like, okay, how am I gonna come up from here? It's gonna be a little bit tough to keep my body lock come up from here. So instead, I decided to go back and uh, entangle the legs again. I, I just recently seen uh, Gordon Ryan do this in a match. Like, I mean, I do this all the time, and I thought it was kind of like a dumb way to enter the legs, but then I watched Gordon do it, and you know, if Gordon does it, then I can do it as well. And we're trying to play a little bit of outside of a hill hook battle into single leg X. Like I said, Tristan's really tough to finish um, hill hooks on. And he does a good job of always trying to go for crab ride, open the back, and and get some exposure going on here. Um, but I mean, I'm seasoned at this game. This is a game I've been playing since I'm, I was pro belt, like almost eight, nine years ago. So I've been doing doing the Baron Bolo for like almost a decade, and I, I learned it from the best guy in the world at Samuel Braga, so or the creator of the Baron Bolo. So kind of know the ins and outs, how to defend, how to counter. And I just kind of stay chill when people are trying to bear and bowl on me. Um, let's see here. I think somebody said it. A mom joke about Tristan. <laughs> but as you guys can see, we're having a good time today. You know, there's always a smile. There's there's hard, obviously hard work going on. But we're smiling. We're chilling. We're having a good time. And uh, that's the end of the end of the round with me and Tristan. Hey, if you guys like that, if you guys saw something, saw a technique or a move or a sequence that you liked it could be from me or any of my training partners that we had on this video today comment in the in the section below and let us know if we can do a, a breakdown or help anybody out even if there's a if there's 500 people that watch this video but one person's able to take something away from it you know what on this channel our job has been done so don't be afraid to ask or or give us some type of critique and if you guys like this video give us uh give us a like if the more likes the more videos like this i'll do and i think it's a really fun interactive way of, of especially my students learning what's going through my head when i roll but if the audience broadens beyond my school or bristol jiu-jitsu then you know that's just a cherry on top so hope you guys have a great day thanks for rolling us with us today and uh enjoy Oops.